Turn your up, Greg. Thank you, Gary. Uh, let me get my laser pointer out here. Uh, for those of you, of you who are new to the division and I haven't met yet, I am Brad Schaumelmeyer and I work with Bill Hoffman and Nicole Ward in the Fisheries Dependent Investigations Project up in Gloucester. Today I'll be discussing our report characterizing the Massachusetts Spring Longfin Squid Fishery in and adjacent to Nantucket Sound. Uh, this report was created in response to a 2019 request from the Massachusetts State Legislature. Uh, this is essentially the presentation I gave the Marine Fisheries Advisory Commission and some legislator, late legislators last May, uh, but I'll gloss over some of the topics uh, to keep it under a half an hour. If you see anything I uh, passed over and you want to discuss it, I'm sure we'll have time for questions at the end. So in the presentation, I'll give a brief uh, background of the report, uh, which details the biology of longfin squid, uh, management, fishery effort, and the sampling in the fishery, uh, and some conservation concerns that spawned the request for this report. I'll then dive further into the analysis that we conducted and the primary takeaways of this report. Looking into the existing literature and research conducted on longfin squid, we find that Toothis palae is a resilient, fast-growing cephalopod whose east coast biomass is comprised of multiple micro cohorts. Uh, they are of significant ecological importance due to their role as forage for many predators, but also as predators themselves. Uh, primary spawning grounds are inshore coastal waters from New Jersey to Cape Cod in the spring and summer months, and offshore on the edge of the continental shelf and on the shelf itself in late fall and winter months. Migration between these areas uh, means that inshore spawners create the offshore adult biomass in the subsequent season and vice versa. Commercial fisheries exist for longfin squid in both the inshore and offshore habitats. Federal commercial fishery for longfin squid is managed by three tiers of permit categories, and the annual quota is divided into three trimesters. Once a trimester quota is reached, there's a 2,500 pound trip limit, and under harvest can be rolled over while quota overages are paid back within the calendar year. The squid fishery is held accountable to a butterfish mortality cap and must report catches either by trip VTR or daily VMS reports. A vessel wishing to fish for longfin squid in state waters must have a coastal access permit with a small mesh trawl squid endorsement. As you can see uh, from the effort heat map produced by the North Northeast Ocean Data Portal, uh, the fishery occurs uh, both on the continental shelf, the shelf edge, uh, primarily in the canyon areas, in the winter and fall, late fall months, and then in the uh, inshore coastal waters in the spring and early summer months, uh, right up against the shore in most cases. The fishery is sampled by the Federal Observer Program as part of the small mesh bottom otter trawl fleet, with up to 740 sea days being allocated in recent years. Uh, DMFC samplers have the ability to augment this fishery coverage and often do day trips out of Massachusetts ports to gather information uh, and important, import, important in-season data. Uh, when these data are aggregated, they allow us to paint a detailed picture of the inshore fishery and address some of the stakeholders' concerns. Uh, both recreational and commercial stakeholders express varied levels of co concern regarding the removal of inshore forage species at a critical time of the year when predators are migrating and feeding. Also, as with most small mesh fisheries, interactions with non-target species and spawning adults uh, raise concerns, as well as the existence of regulatory discard in the fishery. So to answer these questions, we had to determine first what the Massachusetts inshore longfin squid fishery was. Uh, first, the fishery exists due to a small mesh squid trawl exemption zone in light blue in state waters here, uh, and a regulatory small mesh fishery exemption in our CMR. Multiple seasonal uh, gear mobile closures seen in these hatched areas um, determine where and when the fishery can operate. Open squid season is from April 23rd to June 9th each year. At the director's discretion, the small mesh squid trawl fishery can be extended beyond June 9th. Squid vessels that fish in state waters must be no longer than 72 feet overall and must have a cap permit with a squid trawl, uh, small mesh trawl squid endorsement. Their trawl gear must have net rollers no larger than 12 inch diameter and cotton meshes no smaller than one and seven eighths inches. Uh, 
there are also small scale fishers, fisheries that use weirs and rod and rail handline gear to land squid. Uh, but in recent years, the share of catch coming from weirs has decreased, uh, while jig catches has increased, making small mesh bottom trawls still uh, the primary producer in terms of effort and catch in this, in this fishery. So before we began analysis on summarizing catch and landings, we really needed to determine what a squid trip actually was. Uh, we couldn't just pull every single trip uh, landing one pound of squid or more. Uh, luckily, uh, a few years back, the Mid-Atlantic Fisheries Management Council, which manages the squid fishery, uh, was developing Amendment 20 to their squid mackerel butterfish plan. Uh, they conducted an analysis that selected trips with 40% or more longfin squid as the trip hail and called those squid trips. Uh, that netted them 91% of all longfin squid landed for their time series. When we use that same metric on our 2013 to 2017 landings data set, uh, for trips occurring in and adjacent to Nantucket Sound waters, um, a 40% plus rule uh, for any trip that landed one pound of squid or more, uh, we were able to retain nine out of 10 trips and 99% of all of the longfin squid landed from these trips. So, that, so knowing that, uh, we selected the trips spatially from Federal Statistical Area 538, which is Nantucket Sound, Vineyard Sound, and Buzzards Bay, and state reporting areas 10, 13, and 12. Uh, we knew that we also wanted to describe landing south of the islands of Martha's Vineyard and Nantucket, but mismatches in reporting areas and the existence of Stat Area 537, which goes from the shorelines of the islands all the way to the shelf edge, um, hampered our analysis. That said, there was no shortage of data available to create figures of which there are 47 in the, in the uh, report and tables of which there are 20 um, to draw analysis or to create analysis from. To give perspective, uh, the, the report first took a broad fishery overview uh, detailing annual landings from all states for the past 20 years. Uh, we see here in uh, that Rhode Island in purple uh, New York in blue and New Jersey in red uh, account for the most of long fin squid landings. Uh, once again, this is coastwide year round from 1999 to 2018. Uh, and we see that in recent years, 2016 was a, a boom year um, in terms of both landings and also revenue. We also see that the average price of, per pound of squid has gone up every year since 2014. Narrowing, narrowing our focus in on the Massachusetts landings, we see that the 2016 boom also benefited local vessels, and that 2013 was a very poor year uh, for Massachusetts landings. We then narrowed the scope even further uh, to landings from local waters, both Nantucket Sound and adjacent waters, um, during the Massachusetts squid fishery. Um, we see that the Massachusetts boats in blue and Rhode Island boats in red account for uh, all of the landings. Uh, which are actually quite variable by year. And once again, you see the 2013 year, very poor. Getting into these landings data, we find some really interesting trends. Uh, we see that each spring, the, mass, the average price paid um, for squid to, from dealers to fishermen in Massachusetts actually exceeds that of other states. Um, broken down by month within the year, we see that price of squid uh, paid to fishermen during April, May, and June during the season actually decreases over the course of the season, whether it be uh, by, for a market glut, reduced size of product. Um, it's something worth noting each year. We wanted to describe the catches and values of not just longfin squid, but any species that was commercially and recreationally important to fishermen, stakeholders, dealers, and consumers. From these landings data, we determined that scup butterfish, uh, because of their volume, and fluke and black sea bass because of their value um, fit these criteria. We also wanted to further describe the fleet of vessels that prosecutes this fishery. So breaking the effort data into small, which is 45 feet or less, medium, uh, 46 to 59 feet, and large vessels, 60 feet or over, we find that there's far more small boat unique participants in the fishery year to year. Uh, however, uh, medium and large vessels, uh, excuse me, uh, yeah, medium and large vessels um, 
account for most of the catch in these years as well. Uh, large vessels account for greater landings, obviously. Um, in uh, excuse me, large vessels account for most of the landings from the vessel size classes, and um, we also had an idea um, that. Uh, it makes sense if you reason that small vessels are conducting day trips while larger vessels are conducting uh, overnight trips. To uh, prove this, we looked at the trip duration data from using BTR and observer data. And not surprisingly, we found that most Massachusetts-based vessels in blue and green here did one to two day trips, whereas Rhode Island-based vessels um, in purple and red here uh, based on BTR and observer data, did about four to five day trips. Uh, we were then able to query and aggregate data from squid trips sampled by both the observer program and FDI. The observer program protocols dictate that samplers attempt to get actual weights on discards for each haul, and if not feasible, the, su the subsample the catches and expand based on volume. The samplers are also collecting lengths on discarded and often kept species. FDI samplers, which are former observers ourselves, uh, use the same protocols when sampling. So when we conducted the data query, we looked for any commercial haul targeting longfin squid that began in the Vinda Vintuck Vineyard Nantucket Sound area or within 12 nautical miles of the islands that occurred during the state longfin squid fishery in the years 2013 to 17. What we got was truly impressive. Over 1,400 observed hauls, on nearly 200 trips, describing 1.23 million pounds of catch with over 13,000 lengths taken. We then stratified this data set into four spatial subareas. State waters, we, we created the Vin Nan Sound area in light blue here, uh, zero to three nautical miles south area in dark blue. And in federal waters, we created the three to six nautical miles south area in yellow and the six to 12 nautical miles south area in orange. By far the most sampling air, uh, effort was in the Vin Nan Sound area uh, with almost 170 trips and over 1100 hauls. Um, and we calculated the coverage rate for that area specifically to be around 10%, which is respectable. Unfortunately, fewer trips were observed in the six to 12 nautical miles south area. And we adjusted the strength of our findings from these data accordingly. Uh, Plotted as a heat map, we see that effort in each of the four strata reveals high effort areas and even some distinct toes. In fact, many of the locations that fishermen talk about uh, show up in the heat map data. For instance, in the uh, Vineyard Nantucket Sound plot, we see that most of the effort here is in the main channel area with some additional effort in the Collier Ledge area and the Tucker Nock Shoal area. Same can be seen south of the islands where east to west toes um, following a depth contour are more common. After assigning the halls to four spatial strata, we were able to dig into the sampling data and to look at kept and discarded catches. First, we looked at overall kept and discarded fish by area, year, and discarding reason to look at the trends. Overall, discard ratio was 26, excuse me, 28.6%. By area, discard rate was remarkably similar. Um, but by year, we found larger swings, almost 50% discards in 2013 and less than 10% discards in 2015. Observer data also gives us the reason for discarding as dictated by the captain to the observer. There are three main reasons for discards, market-related, regulatory, and other reasons. Uh, most market-related reasons were because there was no market or too small. Um, most regulatory discards were due to minimum size limits, uh, lack of a permit, or filled quota. To further describe catches, we then built numerous catch tables and began looking for additional trends. Starting with our 1.23 million pounds of catch, we split that into fin fishes, shell fishes, which includes longfin squid, and other slash debris. Off the bat, we saw that seaweed NK accounted for 8% of all the catch weight. Uh, over 8%, and we re removed it from further analysis. Uh, longfin squid was 67% of the remaining catch, while scuff was over 14% of the catch. We wanted to round out the other species of importance to this fishery, and uh, were able to include black sea bass, 
uh, butterfish, and fluke due to their high volume or high price. Uh, we called these the big five and continued to work uh, to describe their importance to the longfin squid fishery. It's also worth noting uh, that the big five also have significant recreational fisheries importance. Using these five species, we looked at catch per unit effort, uh, both for kept and discarded, sub area and year, the reason for discarding and available length frequency data in the hopes that we could discover trends and be able to address stakeholder concerns. Starting with squid, we see almost no discards, which would show up here in red. Um, and we see that the catch per unit effort increases as we move south out of the sound into federal waters. We see the 2016 boom year and the 2013 bust year in the CPUE data as well. Uh, Dan suggested we look at CPUE by week of the season. We see that in Vin, Vin Nan Sound in blue here, CPUE increases slightly as we come to the end of the season. Uh, in state and federal waters south of the islands, we see that the CPUE uh, drastically increases as the season ends. Uh, while not many squid were discarded, just about 1,800 pounds total, when they were, it was because they were too small or of poor quality. Length frequency data supports this with almost all discarded squid at a 14 centimeter mantle length or smaller. Looking at CPUEs for the remaining species of importance, we see some interesting trends. Uh, 2016 scup uh, discards skyrocketed. Uh, Stock assessments revealed that this was due to an all-time high 2015 year class that had recruited to the fishery. Similarly, a large butterfish uh, bycat uh, year class prompted uh, increased discards in 2016 and 17. And we see that far more butterfish are discarded per hour of towing in federal waters than in state waters. Fluke ca uh, kept catch rates were relatively similar across all areas. Uh, but discards increased as the hauls moved south. Finally, black sea bass discards have a regulatory aspect here uh, since landings in Massachusetts were prohibited during this time period. However, they are allowed to be landed in Rhode Island. Additionally, two large year classes of black sea bass drove up discards in 2014 and 2016. Looking at the reason for discarding for these species, for scup, we see the minimum size limit or being too small for the commercial uh, market causes over 75% of discards. Once again, I, I realize that these the figures are a little too small to read, so bear with me. Uh, most butterfish discards uh, are because they're either too small or no market exists. As I mentioned, black sea bass are discarded due to a prohibition on retention. And finally, fluke discards, uh, discard reasons are varied. There are trip or commercial quota filled, no permit, vessel retaining only certain size for best price, won't keep until the end of the trip, or too small. Lengths collected by the samplers support these discard reasons. We see that, uh, that some scup over the legal uh, retention limit of nine inches are actually discarded, and this would be due to market-related reasons. Uh, Fluke uh, shows us that size selection for best price is being utilized with some legal size fluke being discarded. And black sea bass lengths show that many legal size fish were discarded, likely Massachusetts boats, while some vessels landing in Rhode Island were able to retain, retain them. And finally, we discussed some other notable catches of species that are managed via interstate management plans for other species of interest. For example, we see that alewife, blueback, and American shad exist in the sampling data, making up about a third of a percent and occurring in both state and federal waters. Almost 1,500 pounds of striped bass were caught, making up 0.13% of the overall catch. Uh, rare species of interest, uh, such as torpedo rays, basking sharks, sand tiger sharks, and mola mola were encountered on six of 199 trips and were released alive 85% of the time, according to the observer data. Finally, incidental takes occurred on only five of the 1,405 halls. So this impressive amount of data cut and sliced in many ways lets us address some of the stakeholder and legislative concerns determine which questions may require further investigation. Overfishing concerns are potentially diminished by looking at the biology of the species and the finding of the most recent stock assessments. Overall, longfin squid are a biologically resilient animal 
fast growing and mature in five months or less with the inshore offshore spawn stock to harvestable biomass dynamic with multiple micro cohorts spread throughout the year. Ultimately, with recruitment strength of inshore spawners impacting offshore harvest and vice versa, uh, and the fishery being managed on a trimester schedule, lasting repeated over harvest appears unlikely. Of the other species found to be overfished or overfishing occurring, few make up sizable portions of the catch. For example, Atlantic mackerel were found to be overfished overfishing occurring in 2017, uh, make up 0.87% of the catch. However, stocks of mackerel have already rebounded to the point where quotas for the species have nearly doubled. Issue of forage removal, a very complicated issue better suited to perhaps another forum, remains speculative. If one were concerned solely about striped bass forage opportunities, uh, they'd need only look to Gary Nelson at all 20, uh, 2003, excuse me, where Nantucket Sound caught bass had stomach contents of unidentified cephalopods at, uh, weighed out at 3.3%. Thanks for that one, Gary. Uh, concerning striped bass as bycatch, if we use the bycatch rate from the observer data, we can predict that for every million pounds of squid caught in Nantucket Sound, roughly one to 3,000 pounds of striped bass are caught. Having been on these trips personally, where they conduct short, shallow water tows, survivability of striped bass caught in these trawls is usually very good. Uh, additionally, this one to 3,000 pound figure pales in comparison to recreational and commercial harvests uh, annually. Multiple stakeholders have voiced concerns over trawl interactions with squid egg mops during the spring fishery. While no local directed studies have looked at the degree that viability is impacted by disruption, there is evidence that displacement could lead to incomplete yolk sac absorption due to early hatching. Uh, having handled these uh, squid trawl caught mops myself, they do seem rather robust, and we know that the inshore recruitment may only directly impact offshore biomass in a subsequent season. Also, numerous mobile gear closures, areas of untowable bottom, and fixed gear may create a level of refuge for these eggs. However, this topic may be one for future investigation, and I know that uh, other agencies have been looking into this. Uh, finally, many voice disapproval of the bycatch rates in this small mesh inshore trawl fishery. When we compare the 28.6% discard rate to other fisheries or fleet rates found uh, in the NOAA National Bycatch Report, we find the small mesh bottom trawl New England and Mid-Atlantic uh, fleets uh, in the middle of the pack at about 25 and 30 percent respectively. Moving on, we wanted to determine the relative importance of this seasonal inshore fishery to the participating small boat fishermen. By taking the annual landings from any Massachusetts-based vessel that landed over 10,000 pounds of long fin squid in three of the five years, we came up with 23 vessels, essentially the Massachusetts squid fleet. The picture we saw was vessels that made one third of their annual revenue targeting ground fish, uh, but, long, but long fin squid was still over 20% of their sales. Uh, fluke and scallops also made up over 10% of annual revenue. Uh, this analysis essentially showed us how important this seven to eight week fishery was to these vessels, which are often day boats with small ground fish portfolios uh, that may travel from other ports and employ multiple crew. This short season in the spring also brings economic benefit to small coastal Massachusetts ports with fuel, dockage, grocery, and net mending services providing necessary infrastructure. Additionally, just after we finished up this report, an economic evaluation of the coastwide squid fishery was released. It found that the longfin squid fishery created over 2,500 full-time jobs annually, and over $240 million in economic output across all sectors. So finally, combining these findings, uh, we were able to come to some high level conclusions and more specific thoughts. We found and felt that the management and monitoring of the long, inshore long fin squid fishery, both in federal and state waters, to be robust. The current allocation method for sea sampling effort and the good rapport that exists between the sampling programs and the squid fishermen suggest that any future issues uh, with this fishery would be revealed in the sampling data. 
monitored by trimesters with only 17% of the annual quota available during the inshore trimester two season and accountable for its overages, repeat overharvest appears unlikely. Managed by the Mid-Atlantic Fisheries Management Council, which fills advisory panels, and committees with stakeholders from all sectors, Squid Macro Butterfish Plan allows the fishery to pursue OI while holding them accountable to their bycatch. And finally, state management of the inshore spring fishery, which is flexible to in-season data and responsive to both fishermen and stakeholders, remains effective. And with that, I'd like to thank all the folks at DMF who helped with this project and uh, made it possible, and the Federal Observer Program who continue to collect high quality data. Uh, and if you'd like a copy of the Squid Report, all 70 pages of it, it's on the DMF website. And with that, uh, if we have any time, Gary, I'd like to take any questions.